Hey everybody, Robert Preston Jr. here with DouglasNile.com, live from my kitchen table. <laughs> I want to talk to you about the TAD meeting tonight. <clears throat> uh, the agenda listed as a special called meeting between the City of Douglas, Coffee County, the Coffee County Board of Education, and the Economic Development Authority. But the purpose of this special called meeting was to give the final approval of the tax allocation district which voters in the city approved back in November. Now, before we jump into this, I do need to issue an apology today, and this is a serious apology. I'm not joking. There's no sometimes I do this with a punchline coming, but there is no punchline tonight. I do need to make an apology to City Commissioner Olivia Pearson. I posted a picture today, a screenshot of a conversation that she had where um, quite honestly, she used some pretty, some pretty rotten language, and I don't like to see our public officials use language like that. Now, I posted it because I initially thought that was a comment made in response to some discussions after last night's city commission meeting. So, I thought that the comment was made in some way to, uh, in reference to city business. All right, that's how it was presented to me. Hang on, drop my pen. Sorry. That's how it was presented to me initially. So I thought if it was related to city business, that people had a right to know what was what was being said. Now, Commissioner Pearson has about three or four different Facebook pages that she uses uh, under different names. <clears throat> and I posted, and of course, as you can imagine, the comments went crazy, and I was monitoring it. And, and, and then I found out later from someone who actually took the screenshot initially that the comment was made about a month ago, a little over a month ago, back in early February, and it was a private conversation. At that point, I made a correction on the post that it didn't happen in reference to city business. I thought about it for a few more minutes, and I said, you know what, if it didn't happen in reference to city business, then it, you know we don't need to have it on here and get into this kind of discussion, so I deleted it. And if I had known it was not in relation to city business, I never would have posted it. Now, again, I don't like to see our public officials use the kind of language that was in that post, particularly posting it on a public forum. I don't think that projects a very good image for the city. And I think the city has some policies, some personnel policies related to social media use for its employees. Now, city commissioners are not city employees. So I know you get into a little bit of a gray area there. However, still, if I had known it was not in relation to city business, I would not have posted it. So once again, a lot of people got upset on both sides. I got a lot of nasty messages, as I always do. But, uh, but again, I want to offer that apology. I try to keep that kind of stuff out. If we're going to talk about things and get into business, I think that it needs to be really about stuff that happens in the public arena related to official city business that was not, and I should not have posted it. So again, I do sincerely apologize for that. Now, our TAD meeting tonight, the TAD is going to happen. I've had a lot of people ask questions. A lot of people want to know because this meeting was supposed to have taken place in January, then it was going to take place in February, and it ultimately took place in March. We were supposed to, we were supposed to <clears throat> break ground in March. That's not going to happen. We're going to break ground in May now. We've still got about six more weeks of, of preparations that to, to take place before we actually do start breaking ground. But all four government entities, and again, you've got the city commission, the county commission, the board of education, economic development authority, all met. Now, the reason the economic development authority is a part of it is because the Economic Development Authority does receive some tax dollars, okay? So these four government entities are those who receive and distribute tax dollars in some shape, form, or fashion. So that's why they were all there. The Economic Development Authority does not have any real uh, legislative or policy-making duties, not, not, not really. They're more of a quasi-government uh, agency that you don't hear a lot of. They work very hard, but you don't hear a lot of what goes on with the Economic Development Authority. But anything related to job growth and obviously economic development rolls through the EDA. So they are a very important part of our community and that's why they were there tonight. So in a nutshell, all four government entities were there and they all approved the 
resolution, the intergovernmental agreements to set up the TAD, to approve it and put us on the pathway to groundbreaking and to moving dirt and building this, this new shopping center. Uh, they all did that unanimously. Now, when I say that unanimously, unanimously for those who were there, <clears throat> the entire county commission was there. The entire economic development authority was there. The entire school board was there. The entire city commission was not there. There were two commissioners who did not show up. And I probably don't have to tell you who those two commissioners are. I think you can figure that out on your own. Now, what's interesting, I want to back up a little bit before we move forward here. <clears throat> Any further, I want to back up to the city commission meeting last night. There was an item on the agenda. Uh, it was item number five on the work session, approve and uh, discuss and approve the amended redevelopment plan for the tax allocation district, okay? And we're gonna get into what some of the amendments were with regard to the financing because how the tax allocation district is going to be paid for has changed since it was initially proposed. So because of the amendments, they had to go back in and approve this, this, this redevelopment plan, which is what the tax allocation district, remember, was called on the ballot <coughs> to, to approve the, the changes to the financing. This was the official public record for the city commission. The vote in November was not from the city commission. That doesn't mean that the city commission approved or disapproved uh, the tax allocation district. Now, you would think that they would have at least given some lip service to approval if they put it on the ballot, all right? But the city commission as a body had not said officially on the record, yes or no, we approve or we disapprove of the tax allocation district until they voted on this uh, amended plan last night. <clears throat> and when they did that, I don't want to rehash everything that went on, but the vote was four to two. All right. Now, Commissioner Bob Moore was not there. His wife was sick. He was there tonight. He was not at the city commission meeting last night. His wife, Miss Barbara, was not feeling well, so he was at home. Uh, he was at home tending to her. And the mayor voted. The mayor let his vote be known. And he doesn't typically vote unless there is a tie. But with something like this, and he did it several times last night because there were several contentious issues. I think he wanted his feelings known and on the record. And a lot of times in, with an important issue, you will see a mayor do that, even though his vote may not be needed to break a tie or to swing it one way or the other on important issues. A lot of times mayors will let their, their vote be known just so people know where they stand on these issues. So the vote was four to two last night with Commissioner Galvin, Commissioner Taylor, Commissioner McNeil, and the mayor voting in favor of it and Commissioner Pearson and Commissioner Durham voting against it. What's interesting to me, and yes, Chuck Sims spoke last night at the meeting and he raised a few issues and he came back and spoke tonight and raised some of those issues. I'm going to get a little more into that. I don't think the issues that Chuck raised, I don't think they completely applied to our situation the way that he thought they did. <clears throat> and of course, when you look at it, by the time we get to this point, there have been a number of public hearings and a number of opportunities to raise these issues. What happened last night when emotions were already so high by the time we got to this, that sort of gave Commissioner Durham, Commissioner Pearson, I think, an opportunity to ask more questions, to express a little more concern, I think, in some ways, false concern over what was happening. I mean, this process has already gotten to this point. It's pretty much gonna happen, okay? And while there was an opportunity for public comments, which uh, the former representative did not come back for the regular meeting and participate in, he had asked for an opportunity to speak in the, in the meeting and the mayor uh, told him uh, no because of time. However, uh, there was time during the public hearing related to this agenda item to offer those comments and those concerns if he wanted to, but he was not there for the regular meeting. So uh, I forget the exact number uh, of, of votes, but it was you know close to 90%, if not more, around 90% of the voters in the city approved the tax allocation district plan. So 
<clears throat> you break it down into districts and on an overwhelmingly favorable vote like that, probably close to 90% of the people in each district voted for it. Now, we didn't break those votes down by district. Well, actually, we did break them down, but, but I didn't break them down in the story. I don't have those numbers in front of me. <clears throat> but most of Commissioner Pearson's constituents and most of Commissioner Durham's constituents voted, I'm sorry, I hit my tripod, voted in favor of the tax allocation district. Last night, when they voted for this redevelopment plan, for this amended redevelopment plan, they voted against the will of the people. So it is in the public record. It is there officially that they were against the tax allocation district. Now, it didn't affect the fact that the allocation district is going to happen, but it should send a message to their constituents that they did not follow the prompting that their constituents gave them to vote in favor of it. This is, there's always an element of risk, an element of risk when you do something like this, okay, when you're spending this kind of money. However, there is a huge ripple effect. This is a huge quality of life issue. And I'm not sure that a city commission and really county commission school board has had an opportunity to make a decision to directly affect the quality of life of this community in a long time. The only thing that I can really think of, and somebody pop up and correct me if I'm wrong here, the only thing that I can think of uh, here in, in my lifetime might be the one ways. You could probably throw the bypass outside of, some, of a transportation issue or maybe the agreement that brought Walmart Distribution Center to Douglas, something like that. <clears throat> you know, and, and you think how long those votes have been in the last 25 to 30 years. I don't think we've had a vote before any government entity that would directly affect the quality of life like this will for everybody, for white, for black, for Hispanic, for Indian, for whatever. And yet, not only did these two commissioners not, um, not only did these two commissioners vote against it last night, they didn't show up tonight. They were not at the meeting. So, uh, on the record tonight, they didn't vote against it, but I think their absence speaks volumes. They were the only two elected officials who have, who sit on boards that have policy making or ordinance making or law making or, sorry, Anne Marie, I did, please forgive me. I, I did not mean to do that, <laughs> but, um, you know, legislative duties in the county, okay? Of those governing bodies that have legislative duties, they were the only two who did not show up. I do not think it was an accident, and I do not think <coughs> that, um, um, and, 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 and I don't think there was a good reason for it. I just simply think that was their way of protesting. And once again, as an aside, we heard some things at the city commission meeting last night. The, the Roberts Rules of Order item that the mayor talked about, Commissioner Pearson uh, said this in the meeting and then Commissioner Durham made some posts on Facebook afterwards stating that if those rules, well, those rules were adopted and that by adopting those rules that <coughs> the city commission set certain members of the community back 100 years. And what they're talking about is Ms. Pearson was stating that if, if those Roberts Rules of Order were officially adopted, that it would limit certain commissioners, she's talking about her, their ability or their right, which is not true, to speak in meetings. And by taking away her voice, it was setting her and her constituents back over 100 years. That's not true. I mean, I, are we not getting tired of this argument? Have we not heard enough of this? Have we not heard enough of these types of excuses? I guess not, but that's the rhetoric that we're hearing. What we had an opportunity to do in part through this item five of the work session last night and then through participating in this meeting tonight is to do something that will move us all forward, that will spring us 
forward however many years, whatever number you want to put on it, but it will bring Coffee County in line with some of our neighboring communities that do have a better quality of life because they have better options. They have better dining options. They have better shopping options. They are, a, they are more vibrant communities in many ways than ours are because we lack these kinds of, of, of resources and these kinds of opportunities. This, may, this, this commission, this county commission, this school board, this economic development authority had the opportunity to turn that around. They could have been a part of it and they chose not to. They chose not to. Are we getting the Lord's chicken? We are getting the Lord's chicken. And I think that it is perfectly acceptable to include the money that you spend at Chick-fil-A as part of your tithe, if you do tithe, because everything that happens in Chick-fil-A belongs to the Lord. Anyway, I'm joking. Pastors, don't get upset. I'm joking. The point is, this was one of the biggest meetings that we've ever had that I can remember going to because it has the greatest, Im the greatest opportunity to make the greatest impact in the shortest period of time on our entire community. I know there have been some controversial parts of it. I know some people aren't all in favor of it. I have a feeling that once this thing gets built and we see what happens and we see how it affects the community in a positive way, that people are going to say, okay, you know, we were wrong. Now, if it's not, you know, a lot of us are going to have egg on our face. But I, I, I think that it is. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to, I'm going to move more into the, the meeting here in just a second. But there, there, there are two people who I think a lot of who came to the table and supported this. Tony Rowell, the county attorney, led the discussion tonight about how the funding had changed. I'm going to try to get into that a little bit. But Tony is absolutely brilliant. I, I, can't, I can't overstate how intelligent he is and how he looks after the best interest, not only of Coffee County, because he is the county attorney, but the community as a whole. And if Tony is on board with something and Tony supports it, it's a good idea. And you can say the same thing for Joanne Lewis. Where we are today, and, and even though things are not perfect in Coffee County, and we have a, a tremendous uh, 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 way to go in, 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 in making some improvements in our community. We have the opportunities that we have now, and we're in position to move forward because of what Joanne Lewis has done over the last 15, 20 years. If the only thing she had done, if the only thing she had done was bring Pilgrim's Pride back here when they left, um, so many years ago, if that was it, that would be enough times 10 to put her in our Coffee County Hall of Fame if we had one, okay? All of us who have jobs, all of us who have a paycheck in some shape, form, or fashion, directly or indirectly, it's related to the work that Joanne did and several others. It was Sid Cottingham and a lot of other people working. Joanne was out in front, a lot of people behind the scenes working, but she spearheaded that and her tenacity is what helped bring Pilgrim's Pride back. And even though most people in Coffee County don't work at Pilgrim's Pride, it is one of the keystone industries for the prosperity of our community. And had it not come back, we would have been in trouble. You think about the poultry farmers, you think about the truck drivers, the hatchery workers, the folks who work in the plant, all the, the, the businesses, the, the, you know, the, the feed mill and, 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 and the, the, the agriculture supply businesses that feed those industries, the tentacles go everywhere, okay? And if that was all she had done, it would have been tremendous. But she's done so much more. And when you put those two people uh, on, on, on the right side of this project, to me, I don't need any more. I don't need any other stamp of approval. It makes sense to me, and I think it's a good idea. Now, what Tony did when he came in and looked at this after the city approved it, uh, and the county got a hold of this and were able to amend this financing and basically do away with the bond issue, which Tony explained that tonight, why they did that, 
<clears throat> it all makes more sense. And it makes those who did not support it look even worse, in my opinion. So, what is what is this new this new amended financing? I am not intelligent enough to completely explain this, okay? Because this is a fairly complicated project. I have mentioned that before. The financing is complicated. The arrangements, the intergovernmental, intergovernmental agreements, all of that is complicated. <clears throat> in a nutshell, in a nutshell, the way we were going to pay for this was with bonds. We were going to go through a bond issuance uh, process and get a pile of money through bonds. It was going to cost us a lot of money in interest. And Tony stated that uh, <laughs> that lawyers make most of the money when it comes to bond projects. And he made a funny joke about he and Sid Cottingham, the two attorneys in the room, that both of them had been trying to get into bond work for years but hadn't been able to get the right break. <laughs> but if they could, they'd be a lot wealthier than they are. <clears throat> bond issues uh, issuances are, are, are very expensive. The cost is enormous, um, and, 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 and they wanted to stay away from that. So the city and the county basically came together using t Sploss money and Sploss money. Brian, if you're watching, I saw your name pop up a minute ago. Please jump in here and let me know, not if I mess this up, but where I mess it up, and please correct me, okay? All right, because I, I, I know you have a better understanding of this than I do. You've been in more detailed discussions than I have. But, but using the various sales tax funds, uh, we're going to make a loan to the EDA, and then the EDA was going to loan money um, uh, uh, to the developers to build the tax, to, to set up this tax allocation district. Going to save about $2.8 million, also going to cut the loan time down, the payoff time from about uh, 20 years uh, to, to, to 12 years. Okay. And maybe even less than that. So, uh, you know, it's going to cut it down <clears throat> quite a bit. There's revenue there, but, you know, how are we going to pay it back? The ad valorem taxes are going to generate uh, revenue that, that doesn't currently exist. Ad valorem taxes on the buildings, ad valorem taxes on the inventory. And of course there are no buildings. There are no inventory right now, <clears throat> but the taxes on those two things will provide revenue to pay it back. <clears throat> they'll redirect those tax dollars to pay back the loans, and then it will, the, the, the tax allocation district is also going to generate sales taxes in the three different sales tax funds that we take a penny for uh, that, will, that will further uh, go back to the community. So <clears throat> basically the Avalorum taxes are going to pay it back, um, and there are safeguards in place to make sure that we do get our money back. Uh, uh, former Representative Sims was very concerned about that, he was also concerned about the fact that county voters did not get an opportunity to say anything or to have any input on this. And I live in the county. I did not get to vote for it. Um, uh, but now the county is in turn loaning money to help pay for the project. He had some concerns about that because, as he put it, that some of the tax dollars that the county is funneling into the tax allocation district could be used for other projects for county taxpayers, and he's right on that. However, as Johnny Wayne Jowers, County Commission Chairman Johnny Wayne Jowers said, uh, the city is in the county too. We tend to think of the city here, and then, you know, at the city limits, that's where the county begins. But the county encompasses everything, including the city. So while in Chuck's eyes, you're taking money away from county taxpayers and putting it in the city, I think some of the county commissioners correctly looked at it as saying, well, people who live in the city are county residents as well. So county residents are still benefiting. And there is a county commission representative uh, who lives in the city and represents the city on the county commission. That, of course, is Oscar Paul. So that was one of the concerns that Chuck had. <clears throat> he also had concerns about T-SPLOS. Now, remember, this is a transportation uh, uh, sales tax. That voters approved, I don't know, a few years ago. He has some concerns about the legalities of taking t sploss money and using it for a project like this. Well, according to what I was told earlier today, 25% of t sploss revenue or t sploss money is discretionary. That those uh, communities that are participating in the t sploss 
can decide what to do with about 25% of that uh, money. It doesn't have to be completely uh, designated already. So part of that discretionary money, city to county are going to take and put toward the toward the uh, uh, toward the tax allocation district. So I think that's a rather convoluted discussion about what went on and about how the funding is different. But basically, city and the county are not going to they're not going to do a bond issuance. They're going to loan money to the AEDA, which will then in turn loan money to the developers to build the tax allocation district. There's also going to be one million dollars put into a road, a city road. Uh, there with the tax allocation districts well around that shopping center. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I will say this, Chuck uh, Sims met with one of the developers for about 30 minutes in the kitchen. We were in the Weir Center and he went in there with the developer and talked to him. And when he came out, he did make some comments at the end and he said, that after that discussion, some of the concerns that he had expressed last night at the city commission meeting had been uh, had been alleviated. Although he still had some concerns again about the teeth blast and then about not being able to vote. But once again, that's a state law. City county had nothing to do with who was able to vote and who wasn't able to vote. That was determined by state law. So again, there there's people keep talking about that. And I understand it, but it's not really, a, and Chuck used a term last night, taxation without representation. That's really not what it is. It's what it might look like on the surface, but when you get below, that's not exactly what it is. But it would have been nice to vote for it. I still have a feeling it would have passed. I don't think it would have changed the outcome of the vote at all, but it would have been nice if we had been able to pass it. Now, just for the record, what we had to do tonight was each county or each, each governing body had to approve the resolution or the intergovernmental agreement independently, okay? So these are items six, seven, eight, and nine on the agenda. <clears throat> when the county adopted the intergovernmental agreement, the motion to adopt was made by Commissioner Jimmy Kitchens. Uh, Commissioner A.J. Dovers seconded the motion. It was a unanimous vote. When the Board of Education uh, uh, agreed to to sign the, the, the intergovernmental agreement. Uh, Brian Preston made the motion. Reagan Miller seconded that motion. When the EDA, <coughs> when it was the EDA's turn to do the same, uh, Liddell Greenway made the motion and Roland Cummins seconded the motion. And then when the city did it, uh, Sidney McNeil made the motion. Mike Galvin seconded. And it was unanimous among those commissioners who were there. And once again, Commissioner Pearson and Commissioner Durham were not there. Uh, again, we had an opportunity here to do something historic, had an opportunity to be something, to, to, to be a part of something special, and they chose to go against the will of the people, voted against it last night in the city commission meeting, and then did not show up to vote on it tonight. So take that for what you will. How long did the meeting last? The meeting lasted about 40 minutes. The meeting lasted about 40 minutes. And once again, I think this is what the mayor is trying to do. This is what I wholeheartedly endorse. And any comments that I make with regard to efficiency of meetings and things like that, this is how a meeting should be run. This is how a meeting should be run. They came in, <clears throat> they went through the agenda, Everyone stood for the pledge. <laughs> and then they ran through everything quickly and efficiently and covered a lot of territory. And if you listen to Tony Rowell, if you've been to county commission meetings before, or you've been anywhere where Tony speaks, Tony says a lot in a short period of time. He speaks quickly, but he also speaks efficiently. He speaks authoritatively, and he understands how to communicate a lot of information in a hurry. So I've got a full page of notes and ran out of room on this piece of paper to make all the notes that I did and actually didn't make as many as I needed to make, but he did it in a hurry. And then we moved on uh, and without any wasted time. I have a feeling if the other commissioners had been there, it might not have 
gone as quickly as it did because there would have been some questions uh, that were asked um, that didn't need to be asked. You know, and once again, this is what you need to understand is a lot of the stuff that goes on in these meetings, particularly city commission meetings, is just a show. These questions have already been answered. Um, everybody already has the information. The issues have already been covered. And it's just, it's just a game. It's almost like a wrestling match. It's almost like a work, okay, that's put on for the cameras. All right, the outcome is already predetermined. You know how the vote's going, you know how everything's going to go, but that's what it is. A lot of times it's just wrestling. And I have seen, I've had people in meetings, in public meetings, fuss at me and go off at me, and I'll see them in Walmart two days later, and they're laughing and hug my neck, and we cut up and joke around. A lot of times people look at this as just a work. And when you put cameras involved, when you get cameras involved, then people play to the cameras, okay? Tonight, nobody did that. It was very professional. I think everyone understood what was at stake and what was going on, and they handled it respectfully. They respected the seriousness of what was happening and the opportunity that we had, okay? So in that regard, it was good, how shall I say this nicely, that there were no distractions there because it was an important meeting. And we had some, some people there who needed to see the very best of Douglas and Coffee County, and they saw that tonight. Now, what I was disappointed in was I thought for sure after we got this passed, there was going to be a meal. I knew we were going to have a seafood buffet catered for the for the meal I went to the I went to the meeting hungry tonight I went to the meeting hungry because I knew we were going to get a seafood buffet what did we have chips and water chips and water on the table since when do we does the city uh, have a meeting like that and skimp on the food come on or at least I thought we would go somewhere and eat and have a nice meal the city was going to pay for I was expecting so I was expecting better. I was expecting to be fed and I didn't. I'll have to wait on Chick-fil-A, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> uh, are we gonna get a bowl and crab or something like that in the in the shopping center? Are we going to? Somebody asked about the about the school board. The the the, the school board, uh, I'm guessing will move. I believe that that's probably on the table. I have not heard um I have not heard anything official on that, but uh, but the uh, uh, but I would imagine the board of education will move with no education facility in there. Then there's no point in in the board of education occupying that spot. So I'm guessing it will move. What's next? Um, <clears throat> I made a note here. There's another, yes, uh, uh, the city is going to have to sign a developmental agreement of some kind um, moving forward. So we've still got to do that. And then we'll be able to start to start moving, moving dirt. Uh, so, uh, you know, once again, hey, we saved all this money with the city and the county loaning money through the EDA. We saved all this money on not issuing bonds. I thought we could have taken some of that money and had a nice seafood buffet at night but we didn't do it, but we didn't do it. I'm disappointed, I'm disappointed. Been at some of these meetings, long, long hours, they ought to give us some crab legs. Actually, I don't like crab legs, I wouldn't. I make jokes about it, but I don't wanna eat crab legs. I'll take a nice steak buffet though, anytime anybody wants to do that. That's what happened tonight. Most of the city commissioners are good sports about our, about our jokes. I guess I probably ought to figure out, take the money that the city and the county are saving without issuing bonds and plug it into my crab leg calculator and see how many crab legs we could buy. Maybe that's what we should have done. I knew these numbers going in. I probably should have done that. I should have, uh, uh, I should have plugged these numbers into the crab legs calculator during our discussion last night where they would have been able to think, you know, to plan ahead and had some food. So there are also a couple of really funny jokes about clarifying who made what motion 
and you know from which government agency and who made the motion who made the second so that we could we could get the minutes right there, there were there were several jokes uh, about uh, about the minutes <laughs> so all in all it was a really good meeting it was really neat if you hadn't watched it go back go back and look I'm gonna take the meeting uh, tomorrow and post it on YouTube so I know it'll it, it flows down on our page and off of our page eventually you can find it if you look under the videos tab all of our videos are there on Facebook but I try to upload a lot of these things to YouTube and let you know when I do. Douglas Now does have a YouTube channel. Check it out. Go subscribe to it. Um, and then you can see all the videos that we posted on there. I just posted a number of videos today. Again, city commission meetings and work sessions going back to February 10th because those have been, those were the topics of discussion and controversy at the commission meeting last night. So I posted those in case you want to go back and see exactly what went on and what everybody's talking about um, you know you can scroll through there uh, the, the 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 february the 10th meeting was the big one that that everybody was discussing last night and the work session was only about 18 minutes and the regular meeting was only about 21 minutes they're both on there so if you scroll to the end really just the last uh, uh, you know the last eight minutes or so of each meeting is what you want to see so you can go in there and watch it so Anyway, that's what happened tonight. Big night for the city, county, for the community, big night for everybody. Um, you know, I, I do want to say this, and, and I hope I'm, I'm not terribly out of line here, but I have, I have a feeling that we're going to end up getting a grocery store, okay? I have not been told that. It's not, certainly it's not official, but I hear people talk, and I pick up on a few things, and I think that we're going to end up, when it's all said and done, with the grocery store that we want and the grocery store that this community needs. Um, I think it's going to happen. I think this is really, really going to be, um, this is really going to be, be big for our community. And once again, let me say this, Taco Bell was, uh, was going to move into the new shopping center, which means they would have abandoned their restaurant you know, a quarter of a mile or so north and, and, and built a new restaurant in, in the shopping center. But what I learned tonight is that they're actually going to tear down the existing restaurant and build a new one in the same location. That's going to leave an opportunity for another restaurant to come in, in, in the shopping center. And it's going to, you know, if they left the existing restaurant there, it creates a problem. Uh, you know, it would create a problem up the road. You got a vacant building, vacant lot, but they're going to basically do what Wendy's did. And I'm, I'm you know, Wendy's basically rebuilt their restaurant. I mean, they were a little bit left, but they gutted the whole thing. And I believe that that's what's going to happen with the Taco Bell. So once again, to recap what's happening on that end of town, you're going to have Taco Bell build a new restaurant. You're going to have the new shopping center. You've got a new development going up beside the Altel building. Okay. You've got Walmart going to do a big renovation, a half million dollar renovation on its store. You've got what happened at Wendy's. You've got the car wash, which I know people say there's a, there shouldn't be a car wash there beside Hardy, but it's a pretty neat looking car wash. and takes up a lot of space and it looks nice. It looks nice. <clears throat> and then of course you have what's going to happen when Woody Folsom eventually builds its new lots just a little bit farther to the southeast around the bypass there between the Deep South Fuel Depot and where the bowling alley used to be. Hopefully and breathe some life into that area as well, basically between Lowe's and, and the movie theater. So again, the whole area now, and, and you're moving a little farther north now, you've gone up close to the college and you're you're going to, to see a lot of renovations and a lot of work and a lot of new construction from there south through the tax allocation district and then east around the bypass back toward the movie theater. But what I'm trying to tell you is, you know, that area of town is going to completely transform itself here in just a few short, in, in just a few short uh, uh, years. 
I mean, I, I'm guessing that the, the shopping center will probably be built, most of it built by the end of the year. Will we be open? Will we be able to do our Christmas shopping there? I don't know how long that takes, but they build these things in a hurry. Somebody's asking Brenda Wooten what's going up by Altel. I, I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but there's going to be a development there and it's, a, and it's because of what's happening in that area. So, uh, you know, the, the, the ripple effect is significant. And it really is. I mean, it, I mean, it's big news. I mean, you know, it's not an industry coming in with 300 jobs that pay $20 an hour. It's not that. But this is going to be something that's going to transform our community. It really is. It really is. It was a big night tonight. And again, you got Tony Rowell behind it working on it. You got Joanne Lewis working on it. And, and, and you've got some of the best minds that we have in our community supporting it. You know, it's really a no-brainer. The voters agreed with it. It's unfortunate you have a couple of elected officials who aren't for progress, you know, who speak out of both sides of their mouth. Oh, you're holding us back, and we're not progressing, and we're not moving forward. Well, now you've got an opportunity to move forward like nothing has ever happened here in this community. Oh, we're not going to support it. Give me a break. Give me a break. You know, let's try something different. The north end of town... Uh, unfortunately, the north end of town is not moving at the same or growing at the same rate that the south end of town is. Everything is going back towards Walmart, back towards the airport, back in that area. And you see that a lot of times in communities. You see, you see, for whatever reason, growth directed. Sometimes it's planned. Sometimes it's just the way it happens. But you see growth going in some directions. And, and in Douglas and Coffee County, the, the city is growing to the south. Um, I would love for the north to grow. I spend a lot of time on the north end of town, uh, but there's just nothing seems to grab a hold and to, and to be able to, to take off. There's just nothing, there's nothing going that way. The industrial parks aren't up that way. Um, the restaurants, there's just, there's just not much north of town. So it's all going south and probably a little late to stop it now. There's some, there's some interesting pieces of property for sale on the north end of town, but nobody's been willing to make an investment up there yet. So I would like to see a little bit more. I don't understand why there's not a, of course you got the catfish house up there, <clears throat> but I don't really understand why there's not a couple of more restaurants, particularly with the amount of traffic you have related to school functions up there. But, you know, again, I'm not a, I'm not a city planner, so I don't know exactly how all that works. But I do know that the, that the growth in our community is going south. So, and, 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 I, and I do think downtown is doing well. There have been some initiatives down, uh, down there uh, that are really working. Downtown looks good. And I think, again, that what's happening now is going to strengthen our downtown. I think that this is going to be something that, that, that helps everyone, okay? And I've said this before, I didn't say it. I believe it's credited to President Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, that a rising tide lifts all ships. And I think we're about to see a, uh, the tide in Douglas and Coffee County rise. And I think everybody is going to benefit. And we need a, uh, we desperately need a shot in the arm. It's gonna be some really nice window dressing. And then I think it's gonna lead to some bigger and better things tonight was a really big night for our community. And I don't know if you realize it, don't know if you understand it, you might not now, but you will. The bypass project that's been completed, you add this on top of it, is going to be really, really big, really big for us. And I was glad that I got to be a part of it and got to witness it. And, 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 and I'm able to sit here and talk about it and share my thoughts with you on it. I really do. I really do. It's a it's a, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty fired up about it. You know, we've had, we've been kicked in the teeth with some of the stuff going on from a government perspective here in Douglas and Coffee County in the last probably year, year and a half. But in spite of that, we've come out of here with this and they did it. And the other thing is, man, we need, need to get out of here. I got to, I got to go to bed. But we, uh, you know, they did it in an election year. Didn't let you, you know, Johnny Lee Roper was a brilliant politician. And Roper used to say, you never do anything big, you never do anything disruptive in an election year. 
and I spoke to a couple of elected officials in the city who were a little concerned about what this might mean for their reelection campaigns, but they did it anyway. The, the, the mayor always likes to say, look, you need to put a little skin in the game. If you're asking us for something, if you want us to do something, you need to put a little skin in the game. Well, they put, they being the commissioners, put some skin in the game in 2019. They went forward with a very aggressive, very controversial project during an election year. And you don't see people do that very often. They don't, uh, uh, they don't, uh, they don't take chances like that. And I know the mayor told me that, that Commissioner Roper would have never been, <laughs> never been in favor of doing anything like this. Uh, and, and, and I know the mayor was uneasy about it. He said, I don't know if we need to be tackling this in an election year, but we've got an opportunity. And he told me a number of times that he felt like that it was his duty to the citizens to do something like this, even if as far as election time goes and re-election goes, and, and, and he had opposition from three people, or excuse me, from two people, a three-person race, a three-man race. He ended up winning without a runoff with something like this on the table. You know, you think about it, that, that, was, that was risky. And several other commissioners had opposition as well. And it was, uh, you know, it was not the most opportune time to try it, but the opportunity presented itself and they took the risk, they gambled, and, 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 and we're, gonna, we're gonna see the benefits of that. So, pretty fired up about it. Good news, good news. I wanna get some good news for a while. Well, thank you guys for watching. This has been a, been a long, long week already. It feels like it ought to be about Thursday. We had a long meeting last night. The meeting tonight wasn't long, but there was a lot at stake. And, uh, and, and, and they, they got it done. So big day for Douglas, big day for Coffee County, big day for everybody. And we hope to see a, uh, uh, you know, we hope to see good things from this for many, many, many years to come. Thank you guys for watching us. Thank you for supporting what we do, for, you know, for, for looking to us and, and, and for allowing us to, uh, to help bring you the news. And in some way we hope, uh, shape a little bit of the public opinion around here and of course we always want to keep the best interest of Douglas and Coffee County in mind. I love this place, been here a lot, got a lot invested in here and want to see everybody do well. I mean everybody. I don't I don't care who you are. If you live in this community, I want to see you prosper. If you've gone to business, if you work for somebody, whatever it is, I want you to draw a paycheck, I want you to draw a good check, I want you to take care of your family, and I want you to be able to put money back into our community and contribute what you can to make this the best community in South Georgia so that our kids, our grandkids, can go to school here, can graduate, can attend college here, and come back and work. That's what I want to see. I want my kids to be able to stay here and work and have a nice uh, life and lifestyle for themselves if that's what they choose to do. And I want everyone else to be able to do that. I don't want to see anybody fail. I don't want to see anybody fail. Nobody. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. Once again, big day today. Hopefully sets the tone for a, uh, for a wonderful, wonderful week. Hope you guys have a great one. If anything breaks between now and the weekend, we'll be there. Remember, hey, let me mention this. We've had a lot of news today, a lot of stuff we're posting on Douglas now. Check us out. Mike Huckabee. Mike Huckabee, former governor of Arkansas, 44th governor of Arkansas, if my memory can serve, serves me correctly. Best-selling author of the New York Times best-selling list, uh, best-seller list. Two-time presidential candidate <clears throat> um, and, and, and a current television personality will be in Douglas. A true national figure will be here speaking at Central Square from six to eight on Saturday night. Tickets are available. This is, this is an event sponsored by Citizens Christian Academy as part of their 50th anniversary celebration. There's information on douglasnow.com. You, uh, you can call CCA. Um, there are tickets still available. Um, so there's still seats there if you wanna hear uh, Mike Huckabee have an opportunity to truly, truly uh, listen to someone who has their finger on the pulse of our country and what's happening uh, politically and socially. It'll be a great opportunity. You can listen to people like me, 
sit up here and talk, <laughs> or you can actually go listen to someone who really knows what's going on um, and, and has a personal relationship and knows these people, uh, our, our policymakers at the national level personally and has a lot of experience and can provide the type of perspective that most of us cannot. And I know everybody a is a political expert and a political pundit on Facebook, but when you get out there and listen to people who really know what they're talking about, that's something uh, very, very special. You'll have that opportunity right here in Douglas on Saturday night. Give CCA a call, check them out if you wanna go, six to eight Saturday night, Central Square, Mike Huckabee. I'm gonna be there, can't stream it, won't be able to. His contract does not permit it. We will not be able to video him live. I've already asked. Uh, we might be able to tape it and show it later. We may not. He may have, uh, uh, we're still looking at the legalities of that, but his contract very well may prevent that. So if you wanna hear Governor Huckabee, the best thing to do is to be there and you'll get to hear everything he says and you might get to shake his hand and take a picture. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will see you, uh, see you if something breaks again. We'll be there. Y'all have a great week.